All right, let's get started. So hi everyone, my name is Martin. I'm co-founder and CEO of Soda. And today we're announcing a major leap for the future of data quality. And especially how data teams ensure trust in data and AI. Five years ago, my co-founder Tom and I, we saw how data engineers were struggling. They were struggling to build and test data pipelines at scale. Yet software engineers had developed a suite of tools for testing their code, but the data engineers, they had no parallel. So we started Soda, and we've been, been working hard to make sure that you have the same quality of tools that software engineers have had for years. Uh, so from preventing issues with data pipeline testing to monitoring data in your production environments with AI. So we've expanded Soda from testing to observability. However, the world has changed. And I think you know what I'm talking about. That's why we're very excited to push the boundaries of what's possible to ensure that you have the right tools to adopt AI as fast as possible. So today is the first day of launch week. We are announcing our vision for the future. And we are uh, sharing how we are building the most intelligent data quality platform ever. What we're building is a foundational piece of data and AI infrastructure. And it's one that every company needs. We're doing it because data engineers and data consumers like yourself, we want to make your life easier. And at the same time, we want to prepare you so you can thrive in the agentic future. Every day this week, we're announcing something new and we hope you'll love it. Today, I'm going to show you what's broken in data quality today. Um, especially given it taken into account where this brave new world um, of, uh, you know, an AI and agents, and then what the future of data quality holds and how this will reduce noise and improve both detection and resolution. What we're announcing today is how we get there. So let's get into it. Let's start with what you already know. Data breaks and it does so constantly. Pipelines fail silently, dashboards lie without warning, data products break, and when something goes wrong, it's often your team that gets pulled in to figure it all out. So the problem is that most data quality tools, they're built for a simpler world. Static schemas, batch jobs, predictable workflows. So they rely on manual rules and test scripts and coverage that only works in some cases. Yeah. But that's where but that's really where it all started. That's where we started, unit tests for data. Useful, but incomplete. You can't test for what you can't predict. Over time, tools in our industry added monitoring, anomaly detection, more automation, but they still fall short. They're noisy. They miss the real issues. They can't see or understand the downstream impact. And they're disconnected from the way that data is actually used in sources, in warehouses, and in AI systems. That's the gap. And that gap is growing. So let me give you two real-world examples, one from a traditional BI product and one from a newer agentic use case. So the traditional example is a data team at a software company. And before you ask, no, it was not soda. But unfortunately, incidents like these, they can happen to the best of us. So this data team, they own a core revenue dashboard and it was used by execs, finance, sales ops. In one quarter, product usage data, they stopped flowing correctly into the warehouse. And there was a column called active session minutes and it was accidentally dropped during a data migration. So it was used for license metering and therefore it immediately negatively impacted revenue uh, in a certain customer segment. And not a single test caught it. The rest of the table still loaded um, all. And as a result, customer usage appeared to flatline for two weeks. So what happened next? Well, sales ops flagged uh, the key accounts at, uh, as at risk. Um, customer success teams reached out to these customers unnecessarily. Finance revisited the forecasts downwards and the CEO had to tell the board. Uh, all of it was based on a data product that looked fine on the surface until somebody manually traced the drops week later. Uh, so the trust hit that was worse than the incident itself. Leadership stopped relying on self-server dashboards. They demanded signed off, the, the data stopped flowing, which means the business will gradually become less competitive unless they can regain that trust. 
And I think we all know that that is a very hard thing to do. So let's raise the stakes. Example two, a large retail platform, they rolled out an autonomous agent that dynamically adjusted to product placement based on recent sales. Um, not only sales, but also the velocity uh, uh, of sales within regions, for example. And it pulled from different sources, sales, inventory levels, pricing, and one upstream feed started duplicating records after a kind of a vendor site uh, schema change happened. It was not a hard error. It was just inflated metrics. So the agent, of course, reacted, pushing products higher into the carousel, reallocating inventory, automatically adjusting promo schedules, and all based on false signals. By the time somebody noticed, two things had happened. One, revenue dropped, obviously, because misaligned promos. But secondly, the ops team no longer trusts the agent decision. The issue? Standard freshness checks and null tests didn't catch it. The data looked valid, but it was just wrong. This is the core problem. Most tooling was built for just tables, not for downstream behaviors. So where are we now? Well, over the past few years, the data quality space has matured. It did. Testing and monitoring have become common practice. Data teams have started to build data quality into their development lifecycle. So in CICD, for example, and in production pipelines with schema checks, freshness checks, business logic, and all of that is a good thing. The best teams really already today are writing checks and soda to validate uh, issues, monitoring basic pipeline health with freshness and volume metrics, using lineage to, to understand the dependencies like the root cause and the impact assessment through our catalog partners, and four, they're running anomaly detection on key KPIs. Now, that's the state of the art. And it works up to a point. Now, there are still some big problems. Um, so the big problems that I see most uh, teams run into is one that uh, data quality is not yet standardized. It's maturity scattered and even sometimes non-existing across certain teams. Producers, uh, they can't or they don't want to fix the problem at the source. Um, Two, the systems are blind to behavior. Like most tools, they stop at the warehouse. They validate what rows look like, not what decisions uh, those rows have powered. So you might catch a schema drift or a freshness issue, but you won't know that it changed the model's behaviors. Or you won't know that it broke a downstream agent workflow. Or you know that it silently corrupted a customer health dashboard. So modern data teams need data quality systems that understand the downstream use, not just the upstream structure. Three, these tools weren't built for an AI native workflow. Yeah. Most tools were designed for batch job, static analysis, uh, not for systems that learn, adapt, and act in real time. They don't handle continuous evolution, streaming data, human in the loop feedback systems. And as a result, they missed edge cases. They failed to scale with complexity and they push back into uh, the teams that are uh, handling it, are dealing with it into reactive workflows. So what does good look like today? Well, it looks like automated test coverage. It looks like fast and broad anomaly detection. It looks like explainable and actionable alerts. It is closing the loop from the detection to the prevention part. But even among the best teams today, there's still frustration. They're doing everything right, but they still get caught off guard. And why is that? Well, it's because the current generation of tools, they can't reason across the layers. They can't trace cause and effect. They can't prioritize which data is worth fixing. They're shallow, siloed, mostly disconnected from how real world systems behave and operate. That is the state of data quality today. It's not broken, but it's incomplete. And it is why we believe that the next generation of data quality tools, it has to be AI first. It has to bring together business and engineering. It has to be built to detect uh, and resolve issues in AI systems and autonomous workflows. That is the gap that we're here uh, and that we're looking to close. That's what leads us into what we're launching next. So where does this all go? What's next for data quality? Well, we believe that the future is quite clear. Data quality has to become smarter. It has to become context aware, and it has to become AI native by design. 
And why is that? Well, because the systems we're building today, they don't wait for dashboards. They act in real time on signals from data pipelines that are constantly shifting. If your data quality systems can't keep up, well, then everything else that is built on top of them will be at risk. So we ask ourselves, what should modern data quality really look like? Well, one, it should reduce noise, not add to it. Today, you still get dozens of alerts that all sound urgent, but most of them aren't. The next generation of DQ should really prioritize issues based on impact, not just is it different or does it matter? So this means that they should understand which changes are expected versus which are uh, just anomalies. They should know which downstream tables, metrics, and models are affected. They should detect issues before they become business problems. That is what needs to be done. Yeah. Two, these systems should understand the context. We're building systems that don't just watch pipelines. They reason about them. They understand what normal looks like in your entire environment, what patterns are seasonal, what's noise, and what's real risk. They don't just say column X looks weird. They say column X is skewed. And as a result, your churn logic models downstream may now be misclassifying key accounts. That's what we're that's what we at least mean by intelligence in the DQ layer. Three, it should trace problems end to end. When something breaks uh, upstream, upstream, you should know exactly where that impact shows up downstream, uh, whether it's in a dashboard, a metric, an autonomous agent. So this means integrated lineage and impact assessment. Uh, cross system wide tracing, visibility from ingestion to decision. And it means that when a system goes off course, you don't waste hours chasing symptoms. You go straight to the root cause. And finally, four, we should support AI native workflows. This is where the future of DQ even gets more critical. More and more teams are building systems with agents, LLMs, and continuous learning models. And these systems adapt, retrain, and act in real time. So you can't monitor those with static, che static checks or daily anomaly reports. You need DQ systems that detect when the input shifts uh, in ways that affect AI behavior, identify degradation in downstream decisions, and keep agents aligned with business intent, not just with technical correctness. And this is where we're building uh, towards fun, uh, fun towards foundational infrastructure for AI, not just for analytics. So how would this have helped in the examples we shared earlier? Well, let's go back to the traditional uh, data uh, product failure in the SaaS company. So that SaaS company with their broken usage metrics, with, well, with smarter AI-first data quality, the system would have understood that active session minutes is a cr critical business metric. Uh, it would have flagged the drop, not, not just as an anomaly, but as a high impact uh, affecting uh, revenue dashboards and customer success workflows. So instead of a generic alert built into a list, you know, the team would have been able to prioritize the issue with traceability to the downstream impact. Now, the fix uh, wouldn't, would have just been a few minutes, not weeks, and trust in the dashboards wouldn't have been lost now let's look at the second example we had, so the agent failure in e-commerce. E With NextGen DQ, the system would have detected the duplicate sales events before they fed into the agent. It would have identified the shift as behavioral drift, not just data drift. And it could have automatically triggered a warning or a halt to the agent's logic, preventing wasted budgets and poor decisions. The agent would have had a guardrail and the ops team wouldn't have had uh, to pick up all the pieces. And that's the kind of system that we're building. Data quality that's proactive, not reactive intelligence. Uh, not brittle, but built for modern systems, not only legacy dashboards. And that's why we're so excited about what we're launching this week. Because we're not just adding some new features. We're laying the groundwork for what data quality needs to be in an AI native world. So before we wrap, 
we've got one more thing to share. To launch, uh, to kick off our launch week, we're announcing a major milestone in our journey to build smarter and AI first data quality. I would like to introduce you all to Hakim from NaniML. <laughs> so the big news today is that we've acquired NaniML. Uh, and if you've worked in machine learning, you've likely heard of them. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. At NaniML, we set out to solve a very specific problem. How do you monitor whether your model is still working when you don't know the real answers yet? But we always knew that this was part of a bigger picture because models don't fail in isolation. They fail when data upstream changes, when users behave differently, or when assumptions drift over time. By joining SODA, we're combining deep model-level insight with data-level observability. And we're not just integrating tech. We're joining forces as one team with one roadmap and a shared mission to help you build data and AI systems you can trust in production. Here's what that means for you starting today. It's smarter data quality alerting with context, powered by NaniML's algorithms. Full lifecycle monitoring across data pipelines and ML and AI systems, with a clear path to observability that spans from ingestion all the way to AI agent. And an important note is that NaniML and SODA's open source libraries aren't going anywhere. We're going to keep supporting and growing the community just like we always have been. Yeah, so this big news is not just for us, but for every team out there trying to build reliable intelligence and AI driven systems. So every day this week, we're dropping something new. Follow along, try it out, give us feedback. You can follow everything at launch.soda.io. We'll have videos, feature walkthroughs, ways to get hands on with the new capabilities and all of that. So thanks for watching. Thanks for building with us. Let's raise the bar for trusted data and trusted systems. Thank you very much. And welcome to the first Soda Launch Week. Woohoo!